Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. Today I will replace the battery in my mobile phone and it's the good old iPhone 4. Afterwards we might do some tests of the old battery and uh, see how much of the capacity it has lost over the time. Uh, the old battery is about uh, two and a half years old so it has been uh, charged and discharged a lot of times. So I got the new battery here and uh, let's try to see if we can get this apart. I've never actually tried this before so let's see, bear with me. It looks like these two screws is the only thing that holds the phone together. And uh, let's turn it around. I think this might slide off. Yes, it does. And we're in. So it looks like the connector is screwed down here. Let's try to undo this. Let's keep this away from the other screws. And now I think we can unplug this connector. Yep. And I don't know if this is glued in. It's just stuck down with some double-sided tape maybe. Let's try to find something and pry this out. So I think if we put this against the frame here we should not make too much damage to the rest of the phone. Yep, there we go. So the old battery has come out and uh, let's just uh, put in the new one. And uh, the tape in there seems to be still adhesive so I'll just uh, use the old pieces. So. If we, if we press this down it shouldn't fall out again, no, it seems fine. Uh, I just noticed this, uh, this little springy thing here that uh, holds in that other connector down there, so we better get that in place. So I think this would work out better if I just uh, bent the connector down here at the side of the battery and uh, try to install it again. Yep, that seems much better. And uh, now let's put the screw back in. Ah, tiny stuff. So I managed to get the screw in there and uh, let's just tighten it up. If I can 
Yeah, there we go. And then uh, now let's put the cover back on. And that's just these last two screws. And uh, let's see if it works. Way. Yep, works indeed. So I'll try to see if I can find any info on this battery, so we can charge it up and uh, measure how much capacity there's left in it. So I couldn't seem to find any info on this connector, but uh, I measured it with the multimeter and I'm sure this left one is uh, the positive and, and the two right pins are the same potential, so I'm assuming that pin one will be the ground, but I'm not entirely sure. So let's try to get this recharged. And, uh, I've set my bench supply to 4.2 volts and uh, a maximum of 10 milliamps just to start with so we don't blow anything up if the connection should be wrong here And uh, the supply drops to 3.9 volts, and uh, that was what I measured with the multimeter, so it seems right. And uh, the voltage is climbing up, so it looks like it's charging the battery, so I'll try to give it a little more current and see what happens. Yeah. Let's just wait for the battery to charge up and uh, come back. And uh, here we can see the battery is slowly charging. I'm only charging this at uh, 330 milliamps because I don't know. I don't know how good my connections are, so I don't want to to burn anything. So the battery has finished charging and we can now start discharging it using a constant current load. By discharging the battery at a constant current we can take time and we can uh, calculate the amp hour capacity of the battery. So I'm measuring the voltage with the multimeter and uh, I'm using my mobile phone to take the time and you can read the current on the display here. I will discharge it at 333 milliamps. So exactly what is a constant current load and uh, why do we need one? So of course we could just use a large power resistor to discharge the battery but uh, then the current will drop and the voltage drops and uh, we don't want that because that will make our calculations very difficult. So you can think of the constant current load as an automatic variable power resistor. It will automatically adjust the voltage drop across this MOSFET here to keep the voltage across these power resistors the same at all time. 
we can do this uh, with the help of this up amp over here and we can set the reference voltage that we want to keep across these resistors with the uh, potentiometer here and if we know the voltage drop across the resistor we can easily calculate the current so by adjusting the reference voltage for the up amp we can set a current using this knob here and we could in theory set this to anything we want but uh, there's of course limitations to how much power we can dissipate in this heatsink so if you want to build your own constant current load then uh, Dave Jones from the EEV book have made an excellent explanation of uh, how these work and how to build them so I suggest you go and check his channel and that is also where I find the inspiration to this one so I'll set the multimeter to capture the data and uh, when I connect this lead the constant current load will start to discharge the battery I'll press start at the same time So you can see the voltage has uh, dropped immediately due to the resistance of the wires and the internal resistance of the battery. So if the battery still have its full rate of current it should take over 3 hours to discharge the battery. But I don't think it have because... Well, I don't hope it have because then there was no reason to change it. But uh, we can just wait and see. And uh, I'll stop the discharge at uh, around 3.2 volts because that is uh, around the lowest safety voltage for the LiPo battery. And uh, there's almost no capacity left anyway. But going below, I think it's. 2.7 uh, thereabouts volts will damage the battery so we don't want that to happen And uh, we're about to pass the 3.2 volt mark where I will stop the test. And there we go. And there uh, you can see the voltage is starting to climb back up again. So if we take a look at the discharge curve I have uh, made out of the data I got from the multimeter we can see that the voltage started at 4.2 volts or almost 4.2 volts and it immediately dropped when we connected the load to about uh, 4.1 or thereabout it then uh, almost linearly discharges until we hit about 3.5 or 3.45 volts and then it starts to drop off very quickly so you can see it doesn't really matter if I stop at 3.2 or 3.1 volt there's almost no capacity it will just drop off anyway and since I don't know the exact uh, cutoff voltage I just stop at 3.2 volts that should be safe enough so uh, our battery was discharging for 3 hours 57 minutes and 55 seconds so I rounded that up to 4 hours and 4 hours at 333 milliamps equals 1332 milliamp hours so uh, that is still 93.8% of the uh, rated capacity of the battery so I guess there was really no 
reason to change the battery. <laughs> but uh, well, <laughs> lesson learned, and uh, I guess it's just the software updates and things that have made the phone use have a little more power. But uh, didn't cost much anyway. So. so I hope you liked the video, even though the result at the end was a little disappointing. I hope that the battery would have lost some of its capacity, but yeah, can't win every time. <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching the video, and uh, if you like it, uh, please give it a thumbs up, and uh, you can subscribe to my channel to uh, receive a notification when I upload a new video. So uh, see.